I will tell you the plot of the Japanese dark fantasy, Promised Neverland. Let's go. The action takes place in the 2045th year, in an orphanage called Grace Field. There are about 40 children in this place, and they are all perfectly happy. The pupils always wear fresh white clothes, get delicious food, and develop in a beautiful green area for walking. The guys are protected by a woman named Isabella, whom they call Mom. The children are not blood relatives, but they live like a big friendly family. Their kind mother's love is enough for everyone. Young creatures can do whatever they like and walk in the fresh air as much as they want. But there is one iron rule, you cannot leave the territory of the shelter. We are watching an ordinary morning in Grace Field begin. Waking up, 15-year-old laughing Emma will be all the other children. After sleeping, the guys run to the kitchen, help their mother set the table, and have breakfast together. Then it's time to study. The children have classes like in a normal school. Emma and her two friends, Norman and Ray, excel in their studies and get the highest grades, 300 points each. After classes, the children run to the garden to play. Life seems perfect, but guys, they can stay in Gracefield forever. Before the age of 16, they are found foster parents and sent to the outside world. Today, baby Connie has found her new family. The children wish her all the best, and the mother takes the girl away from the orphanage. In the evening, Emma Norman talks about how they have only a year left in the orphanage, and then they will go into the vast world. Emma complains that all the children who are adopted promise to write, but no one does. Probably, the new life is so full that they have no time to think about the past. Norman promises that he will definitely not forget Emma and will send her letters. Suddenly, the guys notice that Connie has forgotten her favorite stuffed rabbit in the dining room. They decide to catch up with the girl and return her favorite toe. Norman and Emma saw where Isabella took the horses and went the same way. They are at great risk because according to the rules of the shelter, children cannot go out at night. There is a light on in the building at a distance, but there is no one around. There is a van nearby. Emma looks inside and freezes with horror. Norman approaches and also sees this nightmare. Connie is lying dead on the floor and a flower is stuck in her chest. A noise is heard from the side and the guys hide under the van. But it's not people who are approaching at all, but two giant demons. They start a conversation about what kind of human meat is the most delicious. One of the monsters says that the meat from this farm is elite and is stored especially for rich demons. Shocked by Emma, Norman realizes that Gracefield is a farm where children are raised like cattle and sold to demons. They are not taken away by their parents, but are eaten by creatures. The smarter the student, the tastier his meat. Isabella approaches the demons and discusses with them the most sought-after students, those who scored the highest points. The woman perfectly teaches her wards so that the demons are satisfied. Isabella promises that next time she will bring her best students. Emma and Norman slip away quietly but forget the hair under the van. In the field, a girl has a tantrum. She refuses to believe that Coney is dead and their kind and caring mother is pure evil. Norman calms Emo down and says that they will be able to escape from the orphanage. But the girl cannot leave the rest of the children in this hell who have become like a family to her. The next day, Emma and Norman discuss what happened. The guy offers to think carefully about an escape plan and not tell the others about it until everything is ready, but in the meantime, they want to at least look at the outside world. The children go through the forest and stumble upon a high wall that just can't be climbed. They have no choice but to go back. Meanwhile, a little girl got lost in the forest. Isabella calmly takes out her watch, looks at it, and almost immediately finds the baby. Norman and Emma understand that a special sensor is built into each child's ear, and Mom always knows who is where. Also, each child has a personal number tattooed on his neck. Norman and Emma were in the woods, taking a rope with them, to try to climb over the wall. The guys are caught up by their best friend, Ray, 
who began to suspect something. The friends tell Ray the whole truth about the shelter and what they saw that night. Surprisingly, the guy almost immediately believes them, but Ray is against dragging all the children with him. It can be dangerous behind the wall, and the kids will become a burden, and everyone will die, but we do not agree with them to throw the little ones to certain death. Children go to the library to learn more about demons. Little assistant Phil drags his friends the thickest books, all of them with a picture of an owl on the title page, but the frame in all the books is different. Smart kids understand that this is not a frame at all, but words encrypted in Morse code. Doubt, escape, farm, truth, danger, and finally, a promise. All the books were sent here by a man named Minerva. Looks like there's a secret ally outside. Isabella unexpectedly introduces the guys to her new assistant, Corona's sister. The arrival of a new caretaker significantly reduces the chances of a successful escape. A little later, Isabella talks to Corona, and it turns out that Mom found a toy horse under the van and knows that Emma. Norman and Ray have revealed the truth about the shelter, but she is sure that they will not escape. Isabella orders the Curons to listen to her and do nothing on their own. The children continue to ponder an escape plan. Ray believes that there may well be mom spies among the pupils. It would not be better to connect more elders to their side. The friends decide to tell the whole truth to Don and the guild and convince them that they are not lying. Left alone with Sam and Ray, Norman says that he has come up with a trap for his new band members. What if they're spies? He told everyone about two different places where the escape rope is stored. He told Dune that she was under his bed, and Gilda that in the toilet, where Mom would find a rope, there was a traitor. The next day, the guys ask what's wrong with the rope, and Norman reports that the one under the bed is missing, the spy Don comes out. But everything is much more complicated. In fact, it was not a double, but a triple trap for Don, Gilda, and Ray. Don didn't know that the rope was under the bed. He thought it was in another place. Ray has to open up to his friends. It turns out that the guy had long understood what the trick of the shelter was, but he knew that he could not escape from here. Ray offered Mom a deal to be her personal spy in exchange for postponing the adoption. However, he did not tell Isabella about the rope plan, which leads Norman to believe that he does not want to serve her. In fact, Ray has been dreaming of escaping for a long time. It was he who stole the toy from Kanya so that Emma and Norman would run to give it back and find out the truth. The district needs allies. Now the guy becomes a double spa. At night, Ray goes to her mom and tells her false information that Norman is going to poison her. Isabella thanks the student, but believes that he is not doing enough. Emma and Norman shouldn't have found out about Connie. Finally, Mom hints that he will be the next adopted. In the morning, all five older guys plan to jump over the wall. Sister Curran overhears their conversation, but does not inform Isabella the woman has her own selfish motives. It turns out that, when so much damage, also lived in the shelter and they, she has a sensor sewn into her chest that will explode if she goes outside the farm. So all that is available to her is to climb as high as possible here in the shelter. Corona wants to eliminate Isabella and become Gracefield's new mom. If the children can escape, Isabella will be punished and mom's place will be vacated. At night, the guys sneak into Corona's room and she tells them everything she knows about the outside world. More than a thousand years ago, humans and demons were at war with each other. After a long tedious battle, both sides found a compromise and decided not to bother each other anymore. An agreement was made called the Promise, which stated that humans and demons should live in their separate worlds. But some people stayed in the demon world and started raising children on such farms. Creatures need to eat smart people to avoid becoming mindless monsters. Plus, farms are a guarantee that, having had enough of the meat eaten, Demons will not disturb the human world. Ray has almost finished working on a device that will jam the signals of their sensors, 
an escape will be possible. The children hide the mechanism in Baby Phil's toy pig, but the insidious sister of Corona guesses about the hiding place. She almost managed to confiscate their treasures from the guys when mom came in and clearly prevented her sister from finishing what she had started. She handed her a letter of resignation. Leaving the orphanage, Corona throws Norman a magic pen. It's the only thing she can do to get back at Isabella. At the exit from the shelter, Corona meets a gray-haired grandmother, her boss. The old lady gives her to be eaten by a demon, noticing that she cannot replace Isabella. Meanwhile, the guys are starting to implement the plan. While Ray distracts Mom, Emma and Norman go to the wall. But the plan fails. Mom, suspecting something, locks Ray in the room and rushes after the fugitives. She finds the children by the wall and tells them that she has given them everything they wanted, so they should not resist the inevitable. Emma tries to stop Isabella, but during the fight, the woman breaks the girl's leg. Then, Mom informs Norman that he has been adopted, and tomorrow will be his last day in Gracefield. At night, Emma, Ray, Norman discuss what they should do. Norman refuses to run away without friends, but eventually agrees, especially since Emma and Ray promise that they will find him at large. When everyone falls asleep, Norman finds a mysterious pen in the nightstand that Corona's sister left there to take revenge on Isabella. The next day, Norman escapes and finally climbs the wall. But this is the end, there's a cliff behind the wall, so the guy goes back to the shelter. It turns out that he didn't even turn on the signal jammer, because he planned to return from the very beginning. All he wanted to do was look around and make a map for his friends. He found out that there is only one bridge over the wall at the entrance to the headquarters. This data will help the others escape. In the evening, Isabella takes Norman away from the orphanage, and Emma takes this loss extremely hard. Outside the gate, Norman meets a guy, the caretaker of the worlds. From him, he learns that there are people who have escaped from farms, which means that there is hope for the rest too. But a man named Minerva has already died. Then a monster appears, and Norman accepts death with dignity. The next two months are bleak for Emma, but her leg is gradually healing. She and Ray lost hope and abandoned dreams of escape. Isabella carefully watches the children and is pretty sure she keeps everything under control. But now it's Ray's turn to leave the shelter. At night, Emma comes to the guy to talk about escaping again. But Ray has already come up with his own plan. He decided to burn down the house so that the fire would distract Mom's attention. And so that she would surely start a fire, he decided to set himself on fire as the most valuable meat on the farm. Ray pours fuel on the dining room, douses himself, says goodbye to Sam, and throws a burning match. The fire is spreading rapidly through the house. Emma sobs and calls Isabella for help. Mom tries to put out the fire so that Rainy burns down, but she can't cope with the flames anymore. Suddenly, she realizes that all the children have run out of the house with their shoes on. It turns out that the escape was planned in advance. For the last two months, Emma could not do anything suspicious, as she was under close supervision. Instead, Don and Gilda prepared the other children to escape. Also in Norman's bed, Emma found a letter with a detailed plan of action and maps of the farm. The girl could not tell Ray about this earlier, since Isabella was watching him. The youngest children had to be left at the orphanage, but the older ones promised that one day they would come back for them. Among the fugitives in the forest, suddenly we see Ray. He didn't do. When Ray was about to set himself on fire, Emma caught and extinguished the match. If you run, then all together. And Mom couldn't see behind the wall of flames that Ray wasn't there. She was deceived by the sensor that Ray managed to extract from her ear. The children climb the wall, and Isabella runs after them with a clock. Soon Mom realizes that the device is not working, as the guys took out their sensors. In desperation, she contacts the headquarters and reports on the escape. Children should not cross the bridge. But the bridge was not part of their plans. Norman found and marked on the map a place on the wall from where you can throw a rope to a tree on the other side of the cliff and get over the abyss. 
Emma lets all the children go ahead and stays on the wall last. When she is ready to cross to the other side, Isabella runs up to her. The woman says that she too grew up on a farm like them and also once was here on the wall, but saw the abyss and the dense forest and realized that she could not survive in the outside world. She accepted her fate and became a mother and not only to foster children. She had her own son, to whom she sang a song that only the two of them knew. Her baby was gone, and the happiness of all her children was in the dark, and she did everything so that they could live their lives without sadness. Amy sincerely feels sorry for her mom, but she herself is not afraid to go beyond the wall, and she's not alone. The children are ready to build a new world together. Isabella threatens that if Emma jumps, she will cut the rope. Even so, Emma agrees, there is no turning back for her. She thanks her mom for everything and takes a step towards her friends. Isabella watches Emma cross to the other side, but can't bring herself to break the rope. She wants these kids to have a chance. In the woods on the other side, Emma tells her friends about the magic pen left by Norman. The pen draws an owl in the air, which comes to life and leads the children. It's a sign that they have allies in this world. Meanwhile, Isabella returns to the kids at the orphanage and asks them for forgiveness. We will find out her last secret. Once she heard Ray singing the very song that only the two of them knew and realized that he was her son who had been taken away from her. Isabella is removed from the position of mother for allowing the escape of the pupils. Women know what awaits her, but she believes that she has not lived her life in vain and children meet their first dawn in freedom and believe that they have a happy future. In this story, the heroes conquered me with strength of character and devotion. That is a rare case when everyone does not stand for himself for each other like a mountain. These guys are impossible to break. They either change circumstances and create a new world or accept fate with dignity. They are so young, but adults have something to learn from them. That's it for me. Put a like under the video, write your impressions in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.